This is the Google Pixel 6, and I upgraded to this from my current daily driver, the 2XL. Now, I know guys, I'm a little late to the whole review game, but I think three months in is the perfect time to see how any phone performs, especially after the whole fanfare and commotion of the launch have died down. Back in October, when this thing first came out, the Pixel 6 was hailed as a big comeback by Google, bringing premium phone specs once again at a price that undercuts the competition because they have not done that in quite a while. As many of you might have heard though, the past couple months have not been super kind to the 6 with the promised updates that were not only late, but that also introduced so many bugs to the point that even Marquez Brownlee de-recommended it. That was how bad it is. So in this video, I'm going to ask an important question. Now that the phone has gotten the all-important January update that is said to fix most if not all the problems, can we still consider the 6 the darling and current leader in its price range? Let's find out after these messages. <laughs> Let's start with some quick specs. The Pixel 6 retails for $600 and it sports a 6.4 inch AMOLED running at 60 or 90 hertz depending on your setting. Uh, Gorilla Glass Victus protection at the front and this has no rounded edges unlike the 6 Pro and some of you may or may not like that. I prefer it flat. Uh, running the show in the background is Google's first homemade Mama's Recipe Tensor chip with eight gigs of RAM. And this is overall a strong performing chipset that does a lot of AI computing favors uh, for a few of the phone's wow factor functions. The regular 6 comes in three different colors and two storage flavors, 128 or 256 gigs. Uh, the weight is 207 grams, or about the weight of an average adult hamster. Uh, the camera package, at least on the back, consists of a 50 megapixel main shooter with optical image stabe and also a 12 megapixel 114 degree ultra wide lens at the rear plus a flash. Uh, the selfie cam at the front here, not sure if you can see that little punch hole in the middle, uh, is a lowly 8 megapixel unit. So the main cam at the back uh, does up to 4K 60 frames per second uh, for video, uh, utilizing OIS and EIS together to keep things steady. The front is relegated to uh, 1080p 30 frames per second though, so boo to that. The 6 and 6 Pro are not just 5G millimeter wave capable, but will soon have C-band support as well, which allows for way higher sustained speeds and broader availability, even indoors. Now, battery life. This thing can hit one and a half days with average use of social media, editing a couple of videos, clips here and there, uh, taking pictures, web browsing, playing some games. And just for fun, I played uh, Douglas Lim's worst Chinese New Year music video because, you know, it's Chinese New Year coming up on a loop. And it managed 14 hours from full charge to empty for what it's worth. Uh, the 6 also has IP68 water dust resistance, which means you can accidentally drop this in the potty no problem. Now, taking a closer look at the phone itself, in terms of build, this thing is really well put together, guys. Premium feeling almost, uh, aluminum frame all around this, Gorilla Glass Victus, as we mentioned earlier, and 6 at the back, inherently making this one of the most slippery Pixel phones in existence. I wish this perimeter was grippy, but it's not, and it forces me to not be able to use this naked and I have to slap on a case. So you also got to be careful with the camera hump here. It's all glass. I love the color splash, by the way, at the top. And in speaking of the camera hump, this thing sits about one, uh, two millimeters, 2.5 millimeters away from the body. Uh, not sure if you can see this too. There's the power button and the volume toggle switch. Uh, there are stereo speakers, one here at the top and one here downward, downward firing. USB-C is right there. I do wish this was like the two, uh, 2XL where the stereo speaker was right here at the front too. So really a proper stereo effect. Um, otherwise, the build is nice and simple. Um, there is a underscreen fingerprint sensor. Gone is the trademark one at the back. There's NFC and also a double tap function right here. Um, uh, it's similar to what was found in the iPhone 11 and 12 as well. There's minimal bezels, as we mentioned too earlier. Such a nice departure from the past. It's not as skinny as the 6 Pro though, but I like it as it is. Now, the reason why I'm shooting this outdoors is because I wanted to show you how the screen behaves in bright daylight. Right now it's 10 o'clock, clear blue sky, and say if you're editing photos outdoors, this thing is nice and bright. The banding that you see a little bit, that's from the camera, not, not the phone itself. Uh, so yeah, this thing can push around 830 to 840 nits. It doesn't match up, pair up to like say the S21 Ultra or the Apple Pros because those can hit or exceed a thousand nits easily. But it's still very usable outdoors, uh, much better than some other uh, Pixel phones as well. And on the back here, let's not forget, we also have the wireless charging surface.
Ninja. The vanilla version of Android 12 combined with the brain power of Tensor means our little 6 runs as smooth as butter. Sure, it's light on the customization side, but many users don't even mind that. And speaking of smooth, while I've never had any of the Pixel 6 bugs faced by so many users out there, something about the January update has made multitasking and even things like simple swipes an even more fluid experience than before. Similarly, the Tensor Octa-Core and fast DDR5 RAM combo on this thing allows you to play games like Genshin Impact or edit videos or photos on Google Photos or Snapseed like a boss, yo, without barely heating up or using the much juice. I do miss the rare fingerprint sensor gestures on the Pixel 2 XL, but the 6 kinda sorta makes up for this somewhat with the tap tap function borrowed from Apple at the back here. It's a small ad that improves usability by quite a lot, allowing you to launch pretty much anything on the device. Another Tensor ability is the super psychic voice dictation, accessible from the keyboard. And I kid you not guys, I have not come across a more accurate or speedier voice typing function like this anywhere else. It understands emojis and even punctuations really well. It's crazy how good it is to the point that I've oftentimes texted or taken notes without ever touching the keyboard. Thank you for watching this video, exclamation mark smiley face emoji. Please come back the next time to check out the latest video from Gear Up, period. Will I see you the next time, question mark? Yes, video capture quality is finally, finally up to speed with the rest of the competition. Granted, the colors could be a little bit better, especially in low light, but there's gotta be some kind of secret sauce to the stabilization here because it borders on action cam steady, uh, with a whole lot less image jittering at its limits compared to like say the S21 or iPhone 13, while keeping the crop factor in check. Battery life has been surprisingly good on this. As I mentioned earlier, I can get through a day and a half of average use easy. I unplug at 6.30 in the morning, get back to bed around 10.30, 11, and I still have roughly 30% left. It's also easy to forget that this costs only $600 because we frequently see reviewers out there compare this to like say the S21 or the OnePlus 9 or the iPhone 13. Devices that remember cost two to 400 bucks more. So yes, while the 6 has a decidedly mid-range pricing, for what you get, it's actually pretty impressive, considering even inflation and chip shortages. Oh, yeah. Aside from video, I was expecting to be blown away by the photo quality. And yes, side features like the new action pan and long exposure are cool and all, but what I'm really talking about here is the final rendered shot, because for the most part, it isn't really a night and day, complete night and day difference from what I was getting on my 2XL. Such is the power of the AI processing over hardware even back then. The only time you see the benefit of the 50 megapixel sensor on this thing is like in low light or night shots where there's way less noise, or when you're making large prints because obviously there's just more detail captured here, even in a down sampled file size. Or if you work with the raw files and then edit in something like Lightroom. Personally, I think Tensor is not fully optimized yet to work with the camera hardware because every time I use it, aside from the faster processing times, it just feels like the camera is being held back or something. I've gotta say, no free Google Photos original backup on a brand new Pixel 6 is such a douche move. I mean, for crying out loud, it used to be a major perk of owning a Google phone, but now you're forced to buy storage if you wanna keep things at original quality. That's just sad. Myself, I back up to a NAS and also have an OG Pixel handy just in case. This whole trend of putting glass on the back of your phone has got to die, my friends. And because of it, this phone is as slippery as a greased eel. You put it on his back at the slightest angle at all and it slides. You put it on his face, same thing. It almost acts like a bloody hovercraft sometimes. It just wants to slide around everywhere. The Pixel 6 looks and feels expensive, guys. But when you start looking at the specs, like the camera, the screen resolution, storage capacity, charging speeds, the modem, the CPU, the GPU, they all shout upper mid-tier device. But we all know that's not the whole story because with the whole Pixel phone experience, it's always been about smoothness and flow. And this is where the brains, i.e. Tensor, is paired with, in my opinion, just the perfect amount of brawn and power to create a smartphone that you can count on to take and process photos and videos in a snap and then post to Insta or send a text with nothing but your voice and have a battery that easily lasts beyond a day. 
Google here has created something that finally has made me want to upgrade for my second 2XL. Yes, that's how much I love them and hated the rest. And yes, while some aspects didn't like blow me away right off the bat, like photo accuracy, we can't forget how much this costs and that this is Google's first try at a self-built chipset. And I also don't mean to belittle the technical merits here, but I also can't wait to see what Tensor 2.0 will look like. So with all that said, I'm gonna give the Google Pixel 6 a gear up score of 8.8 .8 out of 10. And this is how I broke it down to get the final score. If you have any questions about it, feel free to comment down below. Well, there you have it guys. And I'll tell you what, I am so blessed to have you watching this. And if you found this video the least bit useful or interesting, please mash subscribe down below and come back for more videos sometime. Some of you have asked if I just do headphones or earbuds. You can check out my playlist though and be proven wrong because I try to cover as much consumer tech as possible because that's my jam and I want to help you out. I'm also on Insta, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can uh, connect with me there and you can click on my Patreon page down here where like Barbecue Jones and Super Yen and others before them, they support me financially because, you know, a guy's gotta have his coffee, you know what I mean? Anyways, remember to thumbs up if you like this video and also go do something kind and loving for somebody today because guess what? The world needs it more than ever and it starts with you. I love y'all. Peace out and I'll see you the next time.